Welcome to another Boiler House Garage video and at last to the continuation of my testing for ethanol content in modern fuels for the purposes of knowing what petrols are safe to use in classic and enthusiast cars. Uh, even for vehicles that use uh, components that can resist the corrosive properties of ethanol, the fuel itself will go stale for faster. E10 for example only has a one to three month shelf life as well as drawing moisture which is not ideal if you're storing fuel or keeping it in tanks of cars or motorbikes that you may put away in the winter months. In the two previous videos of this series we looked at SO Supreme and Shell V Power which were both ethanol free, at least in most parts of England and Wales. But this was before the E10 mandate which came into force about six weeks ago. Now however we're told that super unleaded are the only non-E10 option and to expect 5% in the higher octane E5 super unleaded petrols. The ideal for classic cars and bikes along with two stroke equipment generators and for longer term storage is to have zero ethanol content. So I was curious to see if this was now the case for the previously ethanol free petrols and would explain why there were marked E5 on the fuel pumps in anticipation for this stupid E10 mandate. I shall be retesting the offerings from Shell and SO, beginning with Shell V Power, for the simple fact that it is the petrol I'm using in my classics, and I like to keep a jerry can or two of it just in case we have any surprise fuel shortages, which I should address in just a minute. Uh, but I just want to update on the testing method I'll be using so I don't have to explain it in each video of the particular petrol I'm testing. The method itself doesn't differ from my previous water in a glass jar that I did in the first two videos, but since we're dealing with the possibility of having 0, 5 or 10% ethanol content, I bought a few cheap measuring cylinders, so with some simple maths we can work out what percentage it is rather than just see a line that I've drawn using a sharpie, uh, and if the water level rose higher than the sharpie line which would indicate ethanol content. Instead of the Sharpie line, I'll be filling a 1 litre cylinder with 300 millilitres of water, which I'll be pouring over the top of 700 millilitres of the particular petrol that I'm testing. The water will pass through the petrol and the petrol will sit on top of the water in the cylinder, which will have the 700 millilitres in it beforehand. As in the previous tests, any ethanol in the petrol will be drawn into the water because uh, ethanol is hydrophilic. Hydrophilia is an undesirable property for storing petrol in metal fuel tanks and in a fuel system where you don't want oxidisation to occur, effectively rotting out the internals of your classic car. And this is a separate issue from the ethanol itself causing degradation of rubber and plastic seals and pipe work, etc. However, the positives of hydrophilia means that we have a method of extracting the ethanol from the fuels using water, should we not have the option of buying ethanol-free petrol even now or in the future. The 700 to 300 milliliter ratio of petrol and water will change if there is any ethanol, i.e. the level rising above the Sharpie line in the last videos or the 300 milliliter line in the following videos. If my math serves me correctly, E10 will mean 10% of the 700 milliliters of petrol will be ethanol and pass into the 300 milliliters of water, giving us a line at 370 milliliters. The 700 millilitre petrol now being 10% less at 630 millilitres. In the case of E5 petrol, it's simply half of this change, so only 35 millilitres, half of 70, will move from the petrol into the water. In one of the new videos, I'll test some of the standard E10 unleaded just to have a control and to demonstrate the 10% level change so you can see what you're looking for if you do one of these simple tests yourself. I had planned to do these tests when the mandate came into effect, however I was delayed by the recent fuel shortages a week ago, which I'm sure affected you in some way, or at least you saw it on the news. Thankfully it was a bit of a flash in the pan, storm, tempest in a teacup, and any other phrases and metaphors you can think of, as it was over in about a week. Now if I were a cynical man I might suggest that the panic buying and complete depletion of petrol station stock was actually intentional, or at least a perfect opportunity to undergo recalibration of the strict metering now that E10 will have a different viscosity to E5 and to make any other repairs or adjustments to the pumping systems for the new fuel blends. Despite the E10 mandate being introduced on the 1st of September, the legislation does allow garages to continue selling their E5 stock up until December. However, it's not quite as simple as chucking it straight into the same tanks, and it's especially difficult to meet at its dispensary if it's mixed. I should probably retest any of the fuels I find to be free of ethanol around Christmas time. 
However, most likely is now that petrol stations across the country have had their tanks emptied for a short time. What they were replenished with is likely to be what we have available to us in the near future. I'm ready to test a new batch of Shell V-Power, which I shall be doing in the next video, and shall publish the same time as this one, so please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss each new petrol type as I test it. I also want to take the opportunity to apologise for the loud music drowning out my mumbling speech in the last video, of which I got several complaints about. Sod's law, due to the way the YouTube algorithms work, the commenting actually boosted the video's popularity, and rather ironically, this had been my most viewed video to date, not including some of the videos I've done on contesting speeding tickets, which I deleted about five years ago. Unfortunately, I can't edit out the music, but I did add subtitles if you were that interested in seeing it again. But I'm doing the same test with the same fuel in the next video. So now it would be more relevant to watch this updated test. Some also commented on having to shake the petrol and water mix as well as leave it for about an hour. Uh, pouring the water on top of the petrol actually acts as a mixing method, and although I can't shake these measuring cylinders, I will come back to them after an hour has passed to see if the level actually changes. But crucially, once I've done a test on E10, that will act as a control and demonstrate how the test works to detect ethanol, and you can see how much mixing and waiting time is actually required. I'd also like to thank those of you who have subscribed to me. I passed the 100 subscribers a few months ago. I'm aware that YouTube are advertising using my videos, and I'm unfortunately able to disable the adverts until I've reached 1,000 subscribers. If I ever do pass that milestone, I will go ad-free. I'd highly recommend using the Brave browser, which will allow you to watch ad-free now, as well as choose to earn a cryptocurrency called BATS, a basic attention token. But for now, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.